So today I'm actually going to show you an example, two examples, one from my own game and another one from another game that was played in about the same opening, probably an opening that you guys play. I'm guessing that you guys have played this either with white or with black. And I really want your attention because it's very important to understand. What I'm hoping that you will learn from this game, these games, is actually these two different things. One thing I would like you to learn is how to think out of the box. In other words, not just play based on the principles that you guys are taught. It's like, oh, if this, then that, and all those things that you have to always follow the rules and instructions and principles. Sometimes in certain positions, you can think differently and it can pay off. The second thing is, just because we know that we are supposed to control the center with our pawns and pieces and develop quickly, that doesn't always mean that we can just do what we want. Sometimes we play innocent moves, and before you know it, we can get into real trouble. And I'm going to show you some game that I had against a class A player. He was rated about 1900. And you will see that he was playing chess that seemed really, really good, but you'll see that he actually got punished. Let's take a look at the game. So e4, I am black and he is white. I played e5, knight to f3. How many of you played this position with white or black? So, so far I'm not really explaining the moves too deeply because I think that they are very obvious. We have played e4 and e5, both sides are fighting for the center. White developed his, king, his king's knight, attacking the pawn, black is defending it. Bishop to the center to c4, and black plays the same, also very, very logical, very fine. White castles, black plays knight f6. Again, right now we can say that both players are playing like they were taught how to play proper chess. Control of the center, developing your minor pieces. White already took care of his king. And now the last knight is out. Now he's ready to continue the attack in the center. And I'm playing d6 because I want to develop my bishop out. I have three of my minor pieces. Do you guys know what minor pieces are? Dig your bishops and your knights. Correct. And what are the major pieces? Your yes? Rooks. Correct. So we want to develop the minor pieces first, as we know, and white is ready to develop his minor pieces. And of course, the last bishop is out, pinning the knight. And now in this position, it's time for white to really pay attention. Because when there's a pin on a piece, what, the, what would you like to do when you pin a piece? What, what, what would we like to do to it afterwards? Yes? Okay, but what if I don't want to move by pin piece? How do you, what do you do to me? Let's say your bishop is pinning my knight, and my knight is protected by my queen. Uh, what would you like to do to it, to that pin piece? Correct, you'd like to attack it a second time, right? Or a third time, if you even have a chance. Mm -hmm. So in this position, white should have really paid attention to what is going on in the position, but he was just making moves that seemed logical and good, that doesn't always pay off. In this position, he should have played one of several moves. One idea was to play bishop to e3, develop the last bishop, and if the black knight wants to jump in to the d4 square, then maybe the bishop would just capture it, and there's not going to be so much extra pressure against the pin knight on f3. Another alternative was to immediately hit the bishop, attack the bishop with the move h3, and see what the bishop wants to do. Is the bishop going to trade for the knight? Is he going to go backwards? Or is he going to maintain the pin by playing bishop to h5? That all these moves are possible. OK? And the funny thing is that when I check this move, with the check this game lately, I realize that white can even play this crazy move, knight to a4. Yeah. At first, I thought to myself that that's a very strange move. But yes, you can do that. The reason is after knight to d4, that looks really, really strong, white plays knight takes the bishop on c5, and the pawn takes. And now white has a beautiful little trick. Bishop takes pawn on f7. Mm -hmm. And the point is, if the black king takes it, then my pinned knight is not so pinned anymore. He goes to e5, check, 
forking the king and the the bishop on g4. And I'm going to take that piece on g4. So what do we need? What do I learn? What are we learning from this? That there are two different kinds of pins. One pin is called an absolute pin. An absolute pin is when the, the, the piece behind the pin piece is the king. Then it's simply illegal to move that pin piece. But when it's a queen, for example, like here, most of the time it's inadvisable to move it because you're going to lose the queen that we know is worth nine points. But in this case, it doesn't mean we're not allowed to move it. Here it was definitely very worthwhile to move it. So anyways, this was just a point to make. In the game, he actually went knight to d5. Now I want one of you to raise your hand and tell me what principle of the opening does this move break? Yes. Correct. Don't move the, the piece, same piece twice in the opening. But here it looks like such an att attractive move. Who? There's a big fight for the center. We know that white owns the e4 square, black owns the e5 square, and black is completely in control of the d4 square, and white is in complete control of the d5 square. So white says, hey, let me just hop into that square with my knight. I want to conquer it. But of course, the timing was very, very bad. Who can tell me what move do you think black answered with? I want you to take a little, take a pause, look at the position, don't super rush. I want you to tell me what was played. What move did I play here? Only one person? I want you guys to take a good look at the position. Think to yourself, hmm, OK. I am black in this position. And my coach just told me that knight d5, moving the same piece twice, was maybe a little too fast, maybe a, a little hasty. So that means maybe I have a move that can maybe punish it a little bit. How can I do that? So of course, we look at the position. We don't have a checkmate. We don't even have any checks, as a matter of fact, except on f2, and this just loses the bishop. So can we somehow do something? Do we have a fork? No. Not a good fork, at least. But maybe we notice that the most noticeable thing is the pin on the knight on f3. Maybe we can do something related to that. Yes? Knight d4. Very, very good. The knight hops to d4. And now the king side looks a little embarrassed for white. Now there is a lot of pressure against the king. What to do in this position? Now it was time for white to really pay attention. You need to do something. I can tell you that in this position, white played a very, very bad move. It looks, like a, it looks like such an innocent move. He was saying, well, my three minor pieces are developed, and I'm castled. My center is OK. Let me develop the last undeveloped minor piece, which is the bishop on c1. And he played bishop to e3. This move like looks like such a great move. He is ready to take the knight on d4. If I let him, now he's ready to play bishop takes knight to relieve the pressure against f3, because we know that black is really annoying the knight on f3. But that was a very bad move. Now I want one of you to tell me what to do in this position. What would you play? But again, this is where the interesting part begins. We don't want to play move by move. We want to try to make a plan here. There is a very good continuation. So try to think to yourself, how can black now Take advantage of what White did in this game. He played one little move that was inaccurate. How can we punish it? I'm going to give you about 60 seconds. I'm going to be quiet. And hopefully you too. I want you to look either at your board if you have it or at the, at the demo board. I don't care which one. And try to say to yourself, what can I do? What would I, would what would I like to do if I was black in this position? OK, how do we punish? Yes, do you want to try? Knight takes f3. OK, knight takes f3, check. And I, well, I have to do, I have to take with a pawn, right? Yeah. I can't with, take with a queen or I'm going to lose it. And if I just move my king, I've just lost my knight. So let's say I take with a pawn. What would happen next? Bishop h3. OK, very good. So you're attacking my rook. And let's pretend that I don't want to give you the rook that is worth 5 with a bishop that's worth 3. So I'll go rook to e1. OK, and let's say that I take back with my bishop. Queen f6. Mm -hmm. 
Aha, you are trying to give me a checkmate, right? But if I move my king to the corner? Rook to g1. So there's a game, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You had, I'll tell you, you were playing, you were, you were very smart. You understood that you can break up the king side and that you can use your very strong light squared bishop to make the king look unsafe. And you were almost there. You realized that the piece that you really want to get into the game was the queen. Mm -hmm. But you missed one little detail. Maybe if you think about it one more time. Take a look at the position one more time. Start again in your analysis. Knight takes f3 check. Everybody can see that, right? The knight from d4 takes on f3 check. The pawn on g2 must take, and the bishop goes to h3. Now we are simply threatening. No, don't move the pieces. If you try, not to, try to do it without moving the pieces, is an exercise, OK? So the, the bishop on h3 is attacking the rook on e1. And now we're going to play at the rook on f1. We're going to play rook e1, because we don't want to lose the rook for the bishop. And now what should we do? It's a great exercise for your imagination. One more time. Knight took here. The pawn took back. The bishop moved away from the threat and attacked the rook with a tempo. And white decided not to give the rook by moving the rook to e1. Now you can see that the white king is super, super unsafe. Like if this was a bug house and your opponent was in this situation, what would you ask your partner for? A queen, right? And where would you put that queen? Say it. On G2, of course. Now, this is not a bug house game, but sometimes in regular chess, if you use your imagination, you can get there. We need to get the queen to G2. Think of everything that stands in our way, and then try to think to yourself, how do we solve the problem? How do we actually get to aim for mate? Well, I'm going to show you. You were very, very close. So look, knight took an f3 check, and the pawn took, what else? Bishop a3. Now, if white was smart, if he really realized the danger, he would say, uh-oh, I'm about to lose a rook for a bishop. I'm going to have to defend for the rest of the game. But what can you do? If I blunder, if I make a bad plan, sometimes I have to pay for it. And he would have played king to the corner, king to h1. That would have been his safe move. And then, of course, black would just say, thank you very much. We'll take the rook. And he's going to be up material while the white pawn structure looks really, really ugly. Double pawns and the king side is not safe. Of course, black is much, much better. But in the game, he said, no, I don't want to give you the rook. He just thought, hey, I can save my rook. What's the problem? And now black thought to himself, OK, how do I get my queen to g2? That is my goal. What stands in my way? Who could tell me? Everything that stands in the way of the queen. First of all, think to yourself, what is the shortest way for the queen to get to g2? Pretend that there's nothing, no obstacles in the way. How would the queen make it to g2 the fastest? What would be the, the route? What would be the direction? Who could tell me? Can I do it in one move? No. no. How can I do it maybe in two moves? Yes. Um, if the knight wasn't there? Yeah, we're assuming that there's no obstacles. What would you play? To g5, exactly. Yeah, queen to g5, queen to g2. Can everybody see that? The queen wants to go from here to here and to here. Now, who could tell me what two things stand in the way of the queen? I can see two things that stand in the way of the queen. Yes? The knight and if you, and if the, and, and, and also if your queen got past the knight, it would be check, and then the king would move, so. Well, if the king would move, I would go to g2, it'll be checkmate. Right. But there's something else that disturbs the queen from doing it so easily. One is the knight. The knight on f6 stands in the way of the queen. I can't jump over other pieces, right? Last I checked, that was illegal. So what else? What was the second thing? The bishop. There's a bishop on e3, a, light, a, a white bishop that is attacking the g5 square. Right. OK, now we are black. We want to make a plan to make it available for us to do it. What do we need to do? 
What is our first step of the plan? We have to take care of two obstacles. How do we do that? But the move order is very important. If you do it one way, you're going to either win material or checkmate. If you do it the other way, you might, get, you might get nothing. So try to think to yourself, what do we need to do? Don't be afraid. If you think you know it, raise your hand. Take a good look at the position. Black is dying to get his queen to the G file and give checkmate. That's all he wants to do. But right now, there's something in his way. And there's a white piece that's hitting the square he wants to land on. What do we need to do to make our life easier? Yes? Very good. Why not bishop takes e3 first? Very good. Can you all see that? We want to get rid of this knight that's in our way, this knight, and we want to get rid of the, uh, of the white bishop on e3. So, if we first take the bishop on e3, then he's going to take back with his knight, and that's a big oopsie, because now the knight is taking care of the g2 square. There will not be a mate on g2. Plus, how do we get rid of this knight here? So, step one, getting rid of the knight on f6. Now, we don't want to take a pawn here, right, when we can take a whole knight. So, he, the move is knight takes knight. Step one, we gotten rid of this knight. Do you have a question? Or do you want to follow up? Uh, I think I know what you said. Okay. So, first of all, we got rid of Now, of course, white had the choice of just not taking back. But then, of course, he will be down a piece, and black is already very happy. White can always play king h1, king h1, king h1, and save his king. But he didn't want to, he took back. Now bishop takes e3, getting rid of the second obstacle. Just when white thought that the queen couldn't get to g5, now it can get to g5. Of course, in this position, it was already the only idea to move the king and try to just say, hey, I lost a piece, what can I do? And of course, black is just winning. But my opponent very innocently just took with a pawn. It would have been the same thing if he took with a rook. And now, what do you think black should play? How many of you in class think that they know what black should play in this position? I'm expecting to see every single hand up because we talked about the goal. Black wanted to do something, and now all of a sudden he's able to do it. So the girl all the way in the back. Um, queen G5. Of course, that is very easy now, queen g5. And all of a sudden, the white king is getting mated. It doesn't matter if you go to the corner. It doesn't matter if you go out towards f2. After either one of them, the queen lands on g2 with a checkmate. checkmate. What have we learned from this game? Even if you play a normal opening and you take care of everything you were supposed to, center, peace development, castling, you must pay attention to the opponent's threats. You must be aware of what's necessary in the position. If you play a move like jumping to the center that looks like a great move, not paying attention to the pin, you're going to get into trouble. If you make it even worse by not paying attention to the threat, which is like we said, winning material, then here you're going to lose material. And of course, if you just play too fast and not want to give the material, it's very easy to get mated. Okay, this was our first game, very, very good. And now I want to show you another game in the very same variation of the opening. And you will see a very, very interesting way of playing against it. Let me just find the game one second. Here we go. So again, it was an e4, e5 opening. Knight f3, knight c6. Bishop to c4, bishop to c5. We have an Italian game. As the name of the opening is, again, white castles, knight f6, knight c3, d6. Exactly the same position as before. Exactly. If you remember, in the other game it was d3, and then the bishop went to g4, and then white played knight d5, and then black hit him with knight to d4. Now we have a different kind of position. Now white decided, hey, I really don't like it when my knight gets pinned on g4. So he played this little move. Looks normal, right? We don't want the pin, so we block it, we just stop it with the pawn. Now, in many positions, this is a totally normal move, totally acceptable. In this specific position, right here, right now, this is not a good idea. And let, let me explain to you why. White already castled, so the address of the white king is known. 
we know where it's going to be forever. You can't get rid of it on G1. That's it. It's always going to be on G1, other, unless you want to start taking a travel with the king. The black king is not castled yet. Right now, he's in the center. But let's take a very close look at the center. Is it an open center or a closed center? What do you think? Yes. Closed. It's closed. The pawns are on e4, e5. They cannot move. White cannot play the move b4 because black has too many guys attacking that square. Black cannot play d5 because white has too many guys on that square. So the center is closed. Is it easy to get to the black king? The answer is no. So look at what black does. He makes this move. And this is sometimes really funny in chess. White played the move h3, and I said, bad move. Black plays the move h6, and I say, excellent move. And some of you might say, what? What is the difference? What is the point? Well, I will explain to you. Black is about to start a direct attack against the king. Now, I don't want to see everybody playing the same kind of attack in every one of your games. It depends on the position. This is what I want you to be. I want your mind to be flexible. I want you to have, not just say, oh, I always have to castle, or oh, I can never attack. In this position, the center is closed. White made a big weakness on h3. Take a look at that square right here. And that makes it easiest for us to attack. So white played a3. He wants to attack the bishop with playing the move b4. This is OK, not the end of the world. But now play, black played the monster move g5. This is a very, very strong move. Very unusual. Instead of protecting those pawns that are supposed to guard our king in case we castle, black is just leaving his king in the center. And he goes for a direct attack against the castle king. Many times it would not work. In this position, it works simply because, again, like I said, the white king cannot escape from where he is, and the black king can always move castle queenside, for example. Plus, how can you even touch the black king? So, white played here, that's okay. And he played here, which is reasonable. Okay, so he was attacking the bishop, then he was attacking the knight. That's no problem. Now he played the move knight a4. And that is the beginning of a very bad plan, in my opinion. In this position, probably playing the move d3 was an idea, or even better, knight h2. You have to understand that the move g4 is coming, and it's a super dangerous move. You really have to pay attention to it. You know, or like in the game, knight takes f3 first, and then g4. If I manage to get the move g4 in, I weaken your king side, I open the h file, and I open the g file for my pieces to attack. If you think that that's not a big deal, just keep watching the game and see what happened. So white played a very poor move, knight a4. Now we have to understand what, the, what is the idea of this move. The idea of this move is to set a trap for black. OK? And in this position, of course, black was just not interested in the trap. He just continued very smartly, as we will see. He, just in a, he managed to get the move g4 in very quickly. But the idea was that if you take the pawn on e4, it looks like a free gift, right? Hey, nice gift. Let's do that. Then White's idea was to first eliminate the bishop, then eliminate the knight. And now what do we have? Do we have a closed center or an open center? Open. Exactly. And who is standing there right in the middle waiting to be punished? The king. Correct. Very bad news. So for example, now I can play something like rook to e1, pinning the knight, and threatening to take it. And I can also play d3 on the next move. And now black is all of a sudden saying, wait a minute, why did I play g5 in this position? Of course, now g5 looks really silly, and the black king looks dead. But black is too smart. He's not going to go for taking the pawn on e4. And after knight, e knight a4, he played. Knight takes f3 check. Well. If you take with the pawn, I'm going to take the pawn on h3 with my bishop, winning a pawn and killing your king side. So he took with the queen. And who can tell me black's next move? Who has a good idea of what should we do in this position? What will be a smart move here? Think to yourself, think of the strategy that black chose here, the moves that he picked, and say, how do we continue with it? Our center is closed. The king is safe where it is. The white king is not very safe where he castles. How do we continue the pressure? How do we open files in front of that king? Yes? Um, 
Correct. G5 to G4. Exactly right. Well, the queen is being attacked and the pawn on H3 is being attacked. So he took it and the bishop took. Already we can see that the white king does not feel as comfortable as before. And what piece do you think is going to enjoy the G file? Say it. Yeah. Correct. Now white played a very poor idea. He said, uh-oh, my king side looks really unsafe. Only the pawns are there. All my pieces are on the left, on the queen side. I have to leave the queen available for the defense. So he brought the queen to defend his king. But that was a very bad choice. He should have instead shifted the queen to b3, made an attack against the f7 pawn, and at least forced the black queen to defend it. That would have at least stopped the attack. Instead, he played queen to g3. That is not such a good move. Who can tell me what move would you like to play here with black? What move would make sense here? I'm seeing only two hands up, but I bet that more of you can think about it. Look at the position. We have weakened the white king side. For what purpose? Why did we make the king side weak? We want to attack. We opened files in front of the king. I see the king and the queen on an open G file. That should give us a big hint of what we want to do next. Yes. Rook to g8. Yeah. That's exactly what he did. Bad news. Already you can see that all I want to do is move the bishop on g4 somewhere, and then the rook is going to attack the queen. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. There's a discovered attack. Where, would I, where do you think I want to move this bishop if it was my move? Of course, we know it's white to move. He's going to try to do something against But where would I move my bishop had it been my move one more time? Yes. E2. Correct. Bishop to e2. The bishop is attacking both the rook and the bishop. And the rook is attacking a queen. Not good news. So white played. First of all, he took the bishop. OK. And now black played a very funny move that I have to talk a little bit about. Of course, the normal move was to take with the a pawn towards the center. But the guy was playing with the black pieces, which at the time was a very young guy. And he was playing a very, very older master. He took like this. Looked like a crazy idea. Why would you want to take with the pawn? And it's not maybe the best idea, but his idea was, maybe I'm going to need the C file for my rook later. Let me open it for myself. Very original thinking. You got to, even though it's not the best decision, probably would have been better to take the other way. Still, we have to give him, give him a lot of credit for using his imagination, thinking maybe I need the file, and the file is more important than my pawn structure. Maybe he was wrong, but I think that he deserves thumbs up for thinking with imagination. So now white played queen to h4. Now I can tell you that white is already dead. He is already in trouble. And I want one of you who is a good tactician, someone with a good tactical eye, I want someone to look at the position and think to yourself, what can I do? Of course, the first, if you find the next move, that's nice. But if you can somehow push yourself further, if you can look at the position and say, wow, I do this, and then if my opponent does this, I have this move, and boy, he is just losing. So take a good look at the position, see if you can see beyond the next move. Arjun, did you think of two moves ahead, really? It's like black makes a move, white makes a move, and you already have the next move for black? Tell me. Bishop f3. Bishop f3, very interesting. Again, in this position, we identify the weakness. The weakness in the, in the white army is the g2 pawn. Why? It's not easy to defend. Only the king is defending it. And it's not very easy to defend it. And it's very easy for us to attack it. Here, we are simply taking advantage of the pin. And we play the move here. Now, if you don't do something about this pawn, dudes, the rook is going to go to g2 and take it. And then the poor king is going to have to go to h1 right into the line of fire of the bishop. And what are we going to do? All we have to do is move the rook, and it's going to be a check. Where are we going to move the rook? Just say it. G4. To G4. No. Can you all see it? Wait a minute. That's a good idea. Yeah. Rook takes G2 check. King H1. Rook to G4. The bishop is giving the king a check, and the rook is taking the queen. Yummy, yummy. Winning. So he decided, well, I can't afford to give you the pawn, and he played here. 
the only move to defend the pawn. And maybe white thought, hey, I'm still holding. Life is still good. But now came a move from black, after which I'm sure white knew that he is going to lose this game. Let's see who in this class is going to find that clever, clever move that black played. Just a very logical move. You have to look at the board and think, hmm, man, this looks so bad for white. If I could only do something and then think to yourself, how do you do it? Think how you get your pieces to punish the white weaknesses. Yes? Knight takes e4 is not a terrible move. You win a pawn for nothing, but maybe you allow me to trade queens and then the attack is not that strong, right? Queen. Yeah, I can play queen takes the queen on d8. But uh, I think that black has, again, it's, it's really hard to, arg to, to argue with the move that he actually played because it was so super strong. So you'll see that any other move is just like maybe okay because black already has a great position. But I think that the move that he played, all of you are going to agree that, wow, this is a killer kind of move. Let me give you a hint because I see that you guys look a bit puzzled. Look at the white king. Is he happy? Yeah. No. The white king? I don't think the white king is too happy. I think that the, bl the, the black bishop on f3 is just killing him. Which piece would you like to see get involved there? Which one of your pieces would you like to see around the white king right now? Yes. Queen. The queen or? Yes. A rook. Exactly. If you get a queen or a rook around the, the white king, it's going to be great. Now, it's not so easy to get your queen in there, because notice the white queen on h4 is like a guard. She is like standing like a guard in, in the entrance and saying, you're not entering. And it's going to be tough for the white queen to, go, to get through. But how many points is the queen worth? Nine. And our rook? Five. So we are not afraid to use our rook, because if the queen is going to try to stop the rook, might have to pay with its with his queen, right? With his life. So it's going to be a win of 9 to 5, and that's a good idea. So how can we use our rook? How can we cause mischief with our rook against the queen? Yes? Um, take, um, drive the queen? Think of how do we get our rook involved in this position. There is a great move for us. Yes? Um, I forgot. Okay. Rook two here? Yeah. Okay, so you attack my queen, and let's say that I move my queen somewhere. Let's say that I move it to here. Um, well then There's no real follow-up, right? right? It's like one good attack on the queen, but then what? I want to try to make real trouble for the king here. How do I do it? Well, I want you guys to watch. I don't want to take the whole class just for one move. And I have two more positions I would love to show you. So I would like for you guys to pay close attention. Are you ready? Yeah. Drum roll and rook g5. What a move. What a nasty little surprise now. Who can explain this move to me? What is the purpose of this move? Where is this rook heading? Where am I going with the rook? Yes. Towards the king, but no. via what square? What square am I going to with the rook? Why did I go to g5 with it? Think of my next rook move. Let's pretend that this is black to move one more time. Where would I go with the rook? To attack what? I, I'm, I'm going to attack something, but think of what I want to attack. Yes, all the way in the back? Uh, rook Correct. The rook is about to swing to the right, to h5. Notice that my knight is protecting it and my bishop is protecting it. I'm going to be attacking the queen. And if the queen even dreams about moving, then my rook is going to go where? Let's pretend that my rook goes to h5 and the queen moves away. Then my rook is going to go to h1. And what is that going to be? Bye-bye. Winning. So white has no defense against rook h5. So in the game he went. And what happens to the queen? Can we all do the bye-bye sign? Exactly. The queen is going bye-bye. He had to take, and the knight takes. Well, I don't think we're going to see the rest of the game, because when you win a queen for a rook in this kind of a position, not only did you win a queen for a rook, but also the white king still looks sad. 
And of course, White lost very, very quickly. Okay, this was another game. Now I'm going to show you one last position of the day that has nothing to do with what we learned, but I think you might enjoy it. I think this is what we call the combination of study and fun at the same time. So give me one second to just uh, see where I put it. Yep. Okay. If you've seen this before, then please don't say it. But this is a really fun exercise, so no calling out. If you've seen it before, it's really fun. Have you seen it before? Yeah? Great. So we're looking at this position, and it's white to move an exercise of white to move and win. When we look at this position, what do we see? We see that the black king is stalemated, right? The king cannot make any moves. And we see that black actually doesn't have that many moves to begin with. He has only one little pawn move with his d-pawn. White, on the other hand, is one move away from queening. My pawn is about to become a queen here. So, how do we win the game? What do you think? I want one of you to tell me, what do you think? Can we win the game or not? So, many of us say, hey, of course you can win the game. You can make a queen. And you're going to be up a queen. But the problem is, if I make a queen, I don't even want to make the move, but if I make a queen here, and black plays his only legal move, which is pawn to d3, no matter what white does, even though it's his move, no matter what white does, he cannot avoid stalemate on the next move. There is no move he can make. He can't even give his queen away for free to stop stalemate. So now you say to yourself, wait a minute, this is much more complicated than we thought. If I cannot make a queen, and black is about to push his pawn here and stalemate his king anyways, then I guess that I'm, how am I going to win? Tricky, tricky. So I'm going to let you take a look at the position for a bit. I'm going to hush up for maybe 30 or 60 seconds. And let's see if you guys can use your imagination and say to yourself, is there still a way for white to win? Can I still win this somehow? You have an idea? Yeah. Tell me. Uh, king, Even if I move the king twice, my pawns, the white pawn on g6, will still not allow the king, the black king, to move. So if you go king g8, I'm going to go pawn from d4 to d3. And if you go king to f8, then I still can make any move. It's still made. You mean here? Here? Yeah. Am I allowed to play king here with white? Uh uh, illegal, right? Can't do that. It's too bad they did it en passant there. Yeah, I wish you could do If I could do en passant, life would be great for me because I, I always have a queen in the end, right? Right. Unfortunately, not so. Can't do that. Well, take a look. I'm going to show it to you and you're going to enjoy it. I'm going to show it to you from beginning to end because it's kind of fun to just watch. Step one he made a knight. So, pawn to d3, knight b6, take it. You have to take it, whether you like it or not. So he took it, he played pawn c7, now only move is this, and now he made another knight. And black played the only legal move that he has, which is this, and then he said, take me. And then he had to take, no other legal moves, and pawn advanced to e7, d5, pawn to e8, another knight, Pawn to d4, and now knight to f6, take me, you got to take, g7, f5 is the only move, and now we make the final knight, checkmate. Very cute, right? So what does this teach us? It teaches us a little bit about imagination. You look at the starting position, you think to yourself, wow, I cannot make a queen. The most valuable piece, because after d3, even though it's my move, I have no way to break the stalemate. And then you think to yourself, what do I need to do? And then maybe step by step, this is a bit hard. You see that when you make a knight and he runs out of moves, you immediately allow him for fresh moves. And one by one, we go all the way to the point where I can use my other knight to deliver checkmate. 
Very good. Well, since you are really good, I'll show you one more position. Maybe it's not as exciting, but still I think that you will enjoy it. One last position. And again, it teaches you a little bit about being resourceful. Sometimes the position looks so bad for us, so losing, and yet we have a way to survive. So we look at this position. At first you look at the position and you say, wow, white is up a rook for three points. White must be winning. A rook is so much. But then you say, wait, wait a minute. Black is about to queen his pawns. If he queens his pawn, he's going to be up a queen for a rook. He is the one who's winning. And I can't stop it. Because even if I don't like it, he's going to play g2. And then the only move is going to be g1. Right? So let's say, for example, let's say I play my rook to the corner just to throw in a move. Black, whether he likes it or not, he has to play g2. And any king move, whether he likes it or not, he's going to play g1. So he is winning. So then we say to ourselves, uh-oh, we're in trouble here. But believe it or not, here white can make a draw. Can we think of how can white make a draw here? Do you think you already know? Tell me. Okay, to where? To here or to here? Here? So if you play king e2, then I'm going to go, oopsie, king to g2. Now my plan is very simple as black. I'm going to play h1 queen and either have a new queen or force you to take. And then my other pawn, if you take, then my other pawn is going to march all the way in and make a second queen. So black is totally winning, right? Yeah. No defense against queening my pawn. Yeah. But here is my hint to you guys. In this kind of a position, you have to ask yourself the right question. If you just try to find the moves by force, like a computer, like check, examine all the possible moves, it's going to be super hard. Because just the rook himself, look how many moves he has. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then the king has 1, 2. It's very, very tough. So you have to say to yourself, you have to ask, wait a minute. Aviv said that this is white to move and draw. How do we make a draw in chess? Okay. You can accept an offer, but of course here is just a, a composition, there's no offer of a draw. You can have 50 moves without pushing a pawn or capturing a piece. That's not the case. The pawn is about to go to g2 in about one second. So that's not going to happen. A threefold repetition. Do you think that black is going to repeat moves here? No, he wants to win. So how do we force a repetition? What is another way of getting a draw? Yeah? Say again? Uh, no, I'm, I'm asking in chess, how, do we, what else, how else can we get a draw? Um, what haven't I mentioned? Stalemate. stalemate. So you have to say to yourself, hmm, can I stalemate my king somehow? And the answer is, yes you can. There is a way that you can stalemate your king. But you have to put the pieces on the right squares in order for that to work. If you put your pieces on the wrong squares, then it won't be a stalemate. So he thinks to himself, well, I need to put my king in a way that he's going to run out of moves. And that is what he does. First move, rook e1. The only, only move and a beautiful one to win, the, to draw the game. Well, black, whether he likes it or not, he has exactly one move. g2 check. Forced. Now the white king goes up, check. What's white's only move? I mean, sorry, black's only move. You must advance the pawn, right? So he makes the advances. It doesn't matter if he makes a bishop, it's nothing. If it's knight, it's nothing. And let's see what happens if he makes a rook, first of all, because the queen is the main thing. If the, now we simply make a draw by playing rook f1. You have only one legal move. You have to take it, and I take. And now the black king is stalemated, right? He isn't stalemated. Very good. So, let's pretend that after g1 queen, and now look at this beautiful position. In this position we play king to f3. It looks like, wow, what a gift. Queen takes rook, but what is this? Two. Stalemate. Exactly right. And there's no other move. Notice, after this move, if you don't take the rook, your only other legal move is to put the queen here, but then after white takes it, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's checkmate. 
So your only choice is to play queen takes rook, and now we have a stalemate. Very good, guys. Thank you very much. You are very, very great. Thank you for attending my class.